Hi there, welcome to bitesizeblender.com. In this short tutorial we're going to have a quick look at materials in Blender. Materials are colours and ways that objects refract and reflect light. We're going to start by deleting the default cube because we want something a little bit more interesting which will add a sphere. So we need to do shift A to add a sphere, add in a mesh object, UV sphere, and we're straight away going to hit the smooth shading because we want it to look nice and smooth. I'm just going to use the scroll wheel and scroll in here and I'm actually going to use a duplicate method which is the shift and D key and I'm going to duplicate my sphere across so I've actually got two to play with here. The materials button is this circle up on the tools panel and the other thing that you'll notice that I have to do as well is I'm going to change off the default cycles renderer and we're going to be working with the blender internal renderer for now. By default there's no text <coughs> here because there's no material assigned to this sphere. So I'm just going to click the new button and I get by default material 001. I can change the name here to anything I want, test for instance and then these are now my material options in order to gain color and um, any other type of visual effect I want in this scene. At the top we have a preview window the buttons on the right hand side are just different ways of previewing what my material is going to look like so because I'm using a sphere I'm just going to have a, a preview with a sphere. Scrolling down a bit Starting from the top, this is the most important. This is your diffuse color. So this is the color that the object is going to effectively reflect light from. So I can click on the color and I can choose any color in the spectrum and any brightness of that color. And if I click back out, so now I've got an idea of what my object's going to look like. We have different shaders here and they all have different options so if I went for Toon for instance that gives um, almost like a 16 color render we've got Fresnel which is one of the most accurate so if you want to use plastics and metals we would go for Fresnel moving on down the list now we've chosen our diffuse color so we actually have a color in the scene actually I'm just gonna hit F12 just to render that so we have our two circles, two spheres, one blue and one matte grey which is a default material. Just press escape and come out. We have specularity which if you're new to any type of rendering is the amount of shininess an object has. So this will be the shininess colour so this will be the area here of highlight. We could change that so if we wanted it actually to be a little bit more pinkish and now we've got a pink hue and we also have the intensity which means the amount of shininess the object has so it can be extremely shiny or it can be completely matte so if we boost this up have a bit shiny again we have different renderers here um, we can use Fong which is very good for um, hard plastics and things like that coming on down we have in the shading area we have an emission value whether or not this object will actually emit its own light which is really nice for certain effects especially if you have low lighting you can actually use this and boost up whether or not it'll emit light and as you can see it it's getting lighter and lighter and lighter the very strange thing in blender which I'm not sure if it's a bug or whether it's a fact is the emission value only goes to 2 when you're selecting it with the mouse but it actually has a maximum value of 4 if you're using the keyboard. And now if I hit F12 and render it out, you'll see I've got a very nice shiny sphere there. Right, I press escape. I'm actually going to take that emission straight back to zero because I don't want it to emit any light. Um, along with emissions, you have ambience and translucency. Translucency is not the same as transparency, so don't try and put trans translucence all the way to the top and expect an object to be completely opaque like a, a sheet of glass. If you want something to be clear then you have to tick the transparency box. 
you have a few types of transparency. <coughs> There's a mask, which we won't go into here because it gets very complicated. You have Z transparency, which is a very cheap and cheerful, quick way of rendering transparency. And you have the full blown ray tracing, which costs a lot more power on your renderer, on your CPU. We're going to start with Z transparency. And the alpha value set to 1 means it's not transparent. So if I bring down that and I come back now to the scene and I hit F12, you'll see it's actually getting clearer and clearer. I can bring it right the way down, hit F12, and now it's all but disappeared apart from its highlight. So I can bring that back up, hit F12, and it's back. You can also affect the specularity. Again, if I bring that down and hit F12, the highlights changing. These are all settings you have to play with. Uh, if you set it to ray tracing, you get a lot more information. You can adjust the IOR, which is index of refraction. So in theory, you could set this to be a particular value of diamond or glass. So if I went for 1.52, which is roughly the value of glass. Um, again, I would still have to play with the alpha value. I'm going to boost the specularity right back up to the top. And if I hit F12, <coughs> it doesn't look much different, but it does have an index of refraction value of glass. The depth is the amount of processing that is going to be done on an object. So if you imagine a beam of light hitting some glass, on this it'll say it'll go in two depth deep you can actually then carry on boosting this and as you're going it's getting to look more and more like glass but it's taking more and more time to render everything as it goes along with things being clear so transparent you have the mirror settings which is if you want things to be shiny so you've got to tick that on this is the reflective property here so the more reflective you make an object, the more mirror-like it's going to be. So if I come back out and I hit F12, immediately we've got a lovely mirrored object here, a reflection of that ball. Again, with reflections, you have depth. So whether something reflects off once, twice, three times, four times, depending on how many mirrored surfaces there are around, everything you increase on these objects will always take more time to render. So if you're doing animations, you want it to be cheap and cheerful and have a, a quick reflection, then stick with the defaults. Subsurface sub sub scattering, we're not going to get into. That uh, basically is how light reacts once it gets through the surface of the material um, and tries to make things look a lot more uh, realistic. Again, you have things here like the index of refraction um, and the way that colors and textures um, below the surface of an object look but that uses so much processing and isn't very useful in Blender now that Cycles has arrived. So we'll cancel that one. Under Options, I don't normally mess about with any of these or change anything. The only other one I would mention is under Shadow. And you obviously you can change whether or not an object receives shadows, whether they cast shadows, um, one of the key ones here, receive transparent. If you have an object and you want the object below to receive a shadow even though it's made of glass, then the below object, let's say we have a plane here, that would have to have receive transparent on, otherwise you're going to get very weird looking shadows. Okay, that's about it for materials. There will be another tutorial coming up which is based on textures and combine textures and materials make a really good object. Thank you for watching this short tutorial. See you next time.